So the question is, why are all these Muslims so riled up? That's what we're going to be discussing here. The more important, and I'm the one that's going to send a message to everybody. We are not going to tolerate this. The school board to walk out. As a school board, you allowed someone to stand here for three minutes and disparage the Muslim faith. You did not stop it. Several books once available to students are banned in Dearborn Public Schools tonight. It follows complaints from parents who believe the content is dangerous. One mom even filed a police report. Now, these Muslim parents, obviously, you can see they're very, very upset. So are the Christian parents and other parents because they're sending their children to school to learn reading, writing, and math. But at the same time, now their children are being exposed to pornographic content, to sexually charged, explicit content. Uh, in it, there are actual, and if you read the PDF, which we've done here at Fox 2, uh, it shows you how to have sex with someone else of your same sex. It actually has like diagrams and whatnot. Pornographic and have absolutely no place in local schools that they support with both their children and their tax dollars. There's a Edsel Ford sticker on here. Stephanie Butler says her daughter checked this book out today at Edsel Ford High School. It's titled Flamer. It depicts sexually explicit acts between young boys, some with graphic descriptions. You know, when you put something in a kid's mind, it makes them want to do it more or try it. A normal, psychologically sound and stable mind would come to a conclusion that that specific material is nothing but sexually explicit. Education, if democracy matters, we are the majority here in Dearborn. Let us draw the boundaries on appropriateness. Every parent has a right to object to the things their kids are being exposed to. But there is a breaking point. And the breaking point is this. The fundamental existence of school is not to learn about sexual pleasure, to not to learn about new sex acts. The fundamental purpose of school is to prepare our kids to be successful adults who can go off and have careers. And it is up to every parent to then teach their kids morality. It is out of the place for the school to do it, and I reject any notion that parents here are filled with hate or bigotry. The parents don't want their kids sexualized. If other people want to sexualize their kids, that's their business. It's not about books, it's what's in the books. We're here we just to talk about the books and the pornography the rights inside of the these children. books. Um, I have to say, I looked up some of these books, and like you said, I mean, if you can't show this on the air, then it should not be in a 10-year-old's classroom. Now, there's a few issues here I just want to touch upon, because if these books were, at the same time, covering on 101 ways that a husband can have his wife, please excuse the language, have a, an orgasm, this would also be something that the Muslims, Christians, I'm sure, and other God-conscious people, morally upright people, would object to. People who want to live a decent life, a morally upright life, they wouldn't want their children even exposed to this type of stuff at such a young age. At the same time, if there was explicit content showing how a husband, even though we know this is something that's uh, forbidden in Islam, but if there was something of this type of nature where it was showing a husband having sodomy with his own wife, this would be something, and if they were showing this to the children, a how-to manual, this would be something that the Muslims, and I'm sure probably Christians also, would be protesting. So this is the issue, because this book in particular, it's a how-to guide. It's very, very explicit. That's the issue at hand. It's one thing you're keeping your private affairs in your bedroom to yourself, but now the same objection even if these were books were about husband and wife action or man on woman action, porn, pornography, this would be something that would obviously be protested. We wouldn't want our children to be exposed to these things. So I want you to imagine if you had an individual who came to a children's park and that individual was showing this book and all the explicit content that it had in there to children at the playground, what would happen to this individual? You'd probably get charged and arrested. So what difference is it if it is by a teacher in a school showing these explicit things to a, little, to, a, to a young child? It's nonsensical. It makes no sense. So these things are not being approached logically, scientifically, godly, religiously. As a queer person who has always had to fight for their right to exist, I am sick and tired. 
these things are being emotionally driven and people who object to this are labeled with certain labels. So board members and other people, I'm sure, who also know that this is very distasteful. This is some, this is corruption. This is something that our children, you know, should not be exposed to. They're also scared to speak out because their fear, the repercussions of being labeled certain derogatory names and possibly the repercussions for that. But when you see Christian Muslims here uniting, they're forced to be reckoned with. So other communities should take example because this is something that's happening in other cities. So this is a great opportunity for more Muslim and Christians to really work together and to sh show their cooperation in this area and to stand up within the law, to stand up and speak out against this. The other thing I just wanted to touch upon is this is a great opportunity for those Muslim politicians. There's some very loud voices out there who have been known to support certain causes and to step up. This is a great opportunity for them to step up for these parents' rights, to be heard, to go, come out and to speak up. Also, organizations such as CARE and others, this is a great opportunity. They do some wonderful work in certain areas. This is a great opportunity here to go ahead and to step up to help these parents to be a voice for these parents this is also a great opportunity for those muslim leaders to go ahead and to speak up to come out and to support to help not just muslims in this city in dearborn but also other cities this issue comes up in dearborn but it's the same issue we're seeing in grand rapids we're seeing it in kalamazoo we're seeing it in northern michigan we're seeing it everywhere where school boards think that they can ignore the rights of the parents uh, in terms of how their children are educated. And speak out against what's happening to our children, this attack on our children. We've been told that uh, they're out to kill us all. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. We went to the streets to ask Americans about Islam. Here's what they said. Do you know anything about Islam? No. Do you know anything about Islam? No, sadly. Do you know anything about Islam? Uh, not really. Do you know anything about Islam? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you know what Islam means? Islam? Uh, no. We've been told that uh, they're out to kill us all. That's what you've been told? That Muslims are out to kill you all? Well, that's what they say on TV. Anything? I know it's in the Middle East, isn't it? <laughs> well, then you can have four wives. Brothers and sisters, as you can see, there are so many Americans who don't know about Islam. We need your help to change that. Help us to build the Dean Center, the first mega dawah center in America. Click the donate right now. May God Almighty Allah reward all of you. I cannot leave without giving you a gift. If you're not yet Muslim and you're tuning in to see what these Muslims are talking about and you like a free copy of the Quran, go ahead and visit thedeanshow.com. We'll take care of the postage and everything and get it delivered to you. And if you still have some questions about Islam, call us at 1-800-662-4752. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.